hello guys welcome back to this channel this is the third video on uh, subgrade soils today's topic is soil compaction so what is soil compaction soil compaction is densification of soil by expulsion of air so suppose you have a soil mass a soil mass is made up of solid particles called solids soils uh, poor water and poor air so in order to have <coughs> a dense uh, soil um, soil particle arrangement we have to use a mechanical effort called compaction so this loose soil mass in the presence of moisture content and in addition of compaction will have a reduction in void space so what I mean by that is the loose soil mass uh, we add moisture or water this water is to lubricate soil particles so that these particles can move freely within uh, the soil mass uh, and they will become easy to compact and we add static or dynamic compaction which will lead to a reduction of voids in the soil uh, mass and the soil will have a dense soil arrangement so there are different uses of compaction the first one is increase in soil bearing capacity the soil bearing capacity is dependent on shear strength of the soil and shear strength of the soil in turn uh, is dependent or uh, depends on the cohesion of the soil and angle of internal friction of the soil so compaction increases the cohesion and angle of internal friction of the soil which will increase the soil bearing capacity also compaction increases the stiffness of the soil mass which will improve the soil strength compaction reduces the soil permeability since the void spaces are reduced or there is a reduction in pore voids hence the soil will have less permeability which will be redu reduced in seepage reduced reduction in seepage also compaction increases the soil stability and future settlement improper compaction causes the following issues excessive and differential settlement suppose you have a building resting on loose soil mass so due to this surcharge load there will be an excessive even settlement excessive even settlement also if the soil is not uniformly compacted within that area there will be a difference in elevation which will lead to differential settlement also improper compaction causes cracks in pavement as well as floors and basement walls improper compaction further on causes structural damage to drainage structures such as sewers culverts and pipes when you talk about compaction you have to know about maximum dry density and optimum moisture content these two terms are commonly used in uh, laboratory compaction tests such as standard proctor test and modified proctor test so the maximum dry density is the maximum density or the maximum unit weight that can be achieved by a specific a specific a specified sorry specified means of compaction and the water content or the moisture content corresponding to this maximum dry density is known as optimum water content so the dry density can be affected by different factors the first one is moisture content so you have an optimum moisture content which will give you maximum dry density but if you have a water content below this optimum water content it, the soil particles will not have uh, sufficient lubrication to move easily around the soil mass to be compacted and even if you have uh, water content above the optimum water content water will displace soil particles or the water will pull apart soil particles which will further on reduce the dry density so we have to have optimum moisture content second one is the type of soil being compacted as you can see from the plot silty sand and plastic clay usually have higher maximum dry density whereas poorly graded sand as well as compressible soils have lower dry density third factor is compaction effort so 
the higher the compaction effort, the higher the dry density. Compaction in the laboratory is attained using either standard proctor test or modified proctor test. So in the case of standard proctor test, uh, a soil specimen is compacted in three layers having a compaction effort of 2.5 kg with a uniformly distributed 25 number of blows compaction. Whereas in the case of modified proctor test, the soil sample is compacted in five consecutive layers with a compaction effort of 4.5 kg and compacted with 56 blows. So usually modified proctor test is conducted for uh, for a pavement of aircraft, aircraft pavements, for aircraft pavement. So what is the procedure for standard proctor test? The procedure for standard proctor test is first you have to break up the aggregate samples, air dry it. Second one is to uh, sieve the soil mass using number four sieve or 4.75 millimeter. Discard any material which is retained on number four sieve then you have to uh, prepare at least four samples having uh, a moisture content, optimum moist moisture content, two of them having lower than the optimum moisture content, and two of them having a moisture content above the optimum moisture content. So you need, you need at least four samples other than the optimum moisture content. So these samples should be at, at least uh, have a quantity of three kilograms. So the next step is to uh, compact the sample in three consecutive layers having uh, 25 uni with the uniform 25 number of blows then finally remove the collar holding the uh, the sample and from the middle take a representative sample for water content distribution water content determination water content determination So what's the accuracy or precision? What should be the precision or accuracy of the results? So if you conduct the standard proctor test, standard proctor test within a single lab, then the values of the optimum moisture content should not differ by more than 10%. And if you conduct the standard proctor, proctor test for in different laboratories, the values of the optimum moisture content should not deviate more than 15%. So finally, you have such type of bell curve. This bell curve is known as compaction curve. You have water content on x-axis and dry density on the y-axis. So you have different points representing dry density. So the peak of this bell curve represents the maximum dry density. And the corresponding water content is known as optimum water content. So let's see uh, compaction with practical example. We are given with uh, a soil clay soil sample having a different water content values and a bulk unit weight uh, results. So we are asked to we are required to determine the maximum dry density and optimum water content. Uh, second one is we are required to plot the zero air void curve. This zero air void curve is known as theoretical maximum dry density. Uh, it represents if all the voids are filled by water. That's meant by zero air void curve. And finally, we are required to determine the water content and maximum dry density at 95% of the standard compaction. So the first step is to construct such a table having the water content, the total unit weight or bulk unit weight, the dry unit weight, and the ones corresponding to zero air void curve, the theoretical maximum uh, dry density. So the dry density or the dry unit weight can be determined using this formula. You can find this formula in uh, a video. I have done this video on uh, basic soil mechanics formulas. You have dry density, which is equal to bulk unit weight divided by one plus water content. You can refer that video for uh, derivation of this formula. So using this uh, formula you can determine the dry unit weight and for the zero air void curve dry unit weight which is equal to the specific gravity multiplied by unit weight of water divided by one plus water content multiplied by specific gravity of uh, the solids 
So this curve, this blue curve, represented uh, the dry density and the optimum water content. So the dry density is the peak of this curve. It's about about 18.4, and the water content is about 11.5. And this orange line represents the zero air void curve. Well, we can also determine the 95% standard compaction. So 95% of the standard compaction will be 95% of 18.4. So 95% of 18.4 is about 17.5, and the water content will be about 18.8.1. So 8.1.